day and welcome to the Bajaj Finance Limited Q3 FY22 earnings conference call. This call will be recorded and recording will be made public by the company pursuant to its regulatory obligations. Certain personal information such as your name and organization may be asked during the call. If you do not wish for it to be disclosed, please immediately discontinue this call. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Anuj Singla from Bank of America Securities. Thank you and over to you, Mr. Singla. Thank you, Faizan. Uh, good evening, uh, everyone. This is Anuj Singla from Bank of America Securities. Thank you very much for joining us for the Bajaj Finance earnings call uh, to discuss quarter three FI22 results. To discuss the results, I am pleased to welcome Mr. Rajiv Jain, Managing Director, Bajaj Finance Limited, uh, Mr. Sandeep Jain, a CFO, and other senior members of the management team. Thank you very much for giving us the opportunity to host you, sir. And I invite Mr. Rajiv Jain to take us through the key financial highlights for the quarter, post which we will open the floor for Q&A. With that, over to you, Rajiv, sir. Thank you, Anuj. Thank you, Bofa team. Uh, very good evening to all of you. At the outset, wish you all a very, very happy new year and hope this year is better than the previous two years uh, and we see end of pandemic and going into endemic. Um, uh, I'll be referring to the Q3 FI22 investor presentation that we have uploaded on the investor section of the of our website. Uh, so let's just quickly go, go through that. Um, uh, let's go to panel four. Uh, uh, Overall, uh, a very good quarter for the company, I would say. Uh, across the board improvement in all metrics uh, that I'll just take you through very quickly. Um, the company is quite well prepared to navigate wave three, uh, uh, given strong management overlay provisions that we've created and significantly improved stage two and stage three assets uh, of the company. Uh, uh, so overall, I would say uh, pretty good quarter. Uh, business transformation phase one is delivered and execution of phase two has already been uh, started. Uh, very quickly, we'll go through numbers. My presentation is broken into two parts. I, I intend to take 20 odd minutes, uh, 10 minutes on numbers, 10 minutes on business transformation, and then open uh, uh, the forum for questions um, uh, to be responded between me and Sandeep Jain. Um, Balance sheet, uh, 181,000 crore, year on year growth of 26%. OPEX to name has started to come closer to our, uh, our guidance frame of uh, 30 to 33%. Um, came in at 34.7%, uh, PAT came in at 21.25, uh, 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 ROE uh, on a quarterly basis uh, came in at 5.3%, uh, net NPA came in at 0.78%. So all numbers are, are, are in line with what it used to be uh, pre-COVID. Uh, some are better than pre-COVID. Uh, so uh, if pandemic becomes endemic, we are headed to uh, hopefully um, a strong few years as you go ahead from here. Let's just go through the quarter. Uh, panel 5, uh, year on year, that's why I did not compare profits are up 85%. I did not compare them because they're not comparable. Um, highest ever AUM growth. Uh, in a quarter, we've never clocked 14,700 crores. Uh, that, that was the core AUM growth uh, that we clocked, um, uh, taking our balance sheet to one like 81,000 crore. Uh, uh, overall, AUM composition also remained com very steady. Uh, later in the presentation, you can have a uh, look at it uh, between 1% plus minus. Now, other than the auto finance business, which which is part of our remedial frame, uh, uh, its contribution has been going down. Other uh, all co asset compositions have remained very very steady. Uh, so far in January, given that we are in uh, wave three, um, I thought I'll just use this opportunity to provide uh, some some update or color. Uh, there is no impact of Omicron at this point of time on the business momentum uh, and uh, things at at this juncture in the first 17, 18 days of the month on business momentum remains steady. If there is no disruption um, uh, or increased disruption as a result of um, uh, wave three, uh, hopefully uh, full year AUM should, should be quite strong. Uh, we booked 7.44 million loans. Uh, year on year, as I said, not comparable. Um, uh, 
um, customer franchise 55.36 million. Uh, as the phase one of uh, three one has gone live, or phase one of business transformation has gone live, uh, we do want to. Uh, and when we look at the new customer origination, uh, we do believe that as a result of this, from seven to eight million guidance that we had given uh, to the street for many years, we think that guidance gets up to eight to nine million. As as the infrastructure becomes more and more robust and we we continue to we continue to deliver more and more journeys uh, hopefully that number can someday look at uh, a 10 million kind of number but this one time we believe that for the next six to nine months horizon uh, uh, it should look more like eight to nine million per year run rate rather than seven to eight million run rate cross sell franchise 31.26 million year on year growth of 24 percent geographic footprint added 94 locations in the quarter we are now at 3423 locations and 129 128000 plus distribution points competitive intensity across products remain pretty has increased rapidly post wave 2 uh, 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 mispricing is more rampant. Uh, so far, as a company, uh, we've managed to protect our margin profile across businesses. Uh, but uh, normally, uh, 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 that's one of the things that I'm not personally happy with because in retail businesses, uh, 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 it gets followed up by credit costs. Uh, uh, but it's quite quite intense competitive activity is what I would say. Uh, interest income reversal, going back closer to PNL, um, uh, for the Q3 was 241 crores. Um, we had guided it should come back to 180 to 200 crores by Q4. Uh, we're holding on to the guidance. Um, that's really where it will go to. Uh, it's very close. Uh, last year, same time, it was 450 crores. This year, same time, it is 241 crores. And uh, by next quarter, if there's no wave three, then it should go back to 180 to 200 crores. Cost of funds um, uh, came to 6.72%, uh, providing a reasonable lift. We are... We are in, uh, we are originating as much longer assets as uh, liability. Uh, we are continuing to uh, make the liability profile longer, uh, raise 2,700 crores in, in NCDs in, in three years and above, uh, in, in fixed interest rate in NCDs. In, of that, 2,100 came in 10-year money. Uh, I think in the last two quarters, you raised 5,000 odd crores. In the last two quarters, you raised uh, close to 5,000 odd crores in... Uh, in uh, in 10 year money uh, we in first 14 years we didn't raise that kind of money in uh, um, altogether um, liquidity buffer came in at 14400 crores should normalize to 11000 crores um, uh, but between choosing long term borrowings and uh, liquidity buffer choice is quite clear we'll choose uh, uh, long term uh, borrowings as a company uh, panel 6 very quickly over to some more detail uh, Deposit book 30,000, just a tad below 30,500 crores. 20 percent of total borrowing uh, came in at 70-30 in terms of uh, mix between retail and corporate. Opex to name 34.7. Uh, we expected to normalize between 33 and 34 percent by Q4. Uh, Continue to invest in in teams and technology for business transformation. I'll cover that in uh, in just two three more uh, uh, next two three slides. Uh, so we continue to invest uh, as we uh, as we focus on delivering the near term uh, quarterly profitability. Loan loss and provision uh, took 1,051 crores. Uh, we've increased management overlay provisions in Q3 from 832 crores actually to 1,083 crores uh, to protect ourselves or the balance sheet from probable losses that may arise out of Wave 3. Uh, wave 3 clarity on impact will only emerge once January default rates, January collection efficiencies, February default rates, and February collection efficiencies emerge. Uh, that's that's, I would say, 60 days away or 45 days away, um, just uh, uh, even from a stress testing standpoint. Uh, but we thought it prudent to, um, uh, to take a management view uh, and have carried a 250 crore additional uh, provision in Q3 uh, against uh, uh, third wave. That management efficiency across products uh, improved further. Uh, we are looking at them as uh, ever best collection efficiencies or debt management efficiencies that across by line of business that we've seen uh, um, uh, in the last 14 to 15 years. Uh, bounce rate for July across products um, uh, are in line with December. Um, so uh, uh, at least one metric out of four that determines fundamentally what losses could look like is at least out of the way. And we'll wait for other three to emerge uh, before taking a uh, view on um, what could uh, arise out of wave three. Um, 
Having said that, uh, as I said, we want to continue to remain conservative given continued uncertainty of waves. We are in third wave, we might have a fourth wave. Uh, over the last two years, I now worry about the month of June. The last two Junes have been terrible. Um, you know, uh, if June, by June, if we are endemic, then I would say we are endemic. Uh, uh, so as a, as a measure of prudence, uh, we, 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 we decided to carry, um, and given strong profitability, uh, we decided to carry uh, uh, sufficient overlays. And we are forecasting that on a full year basis, instead of 4,300 to 4,500 crores of loan loss provisions, we'll carry 4,800 to 5,000 crores. Of this, if I may, uh, we've already uh, taken 4,000. 4,100 in the three quarters, um, and depending on how it plays out, uh, uh, the fourth quarter we may uh, take uh, the balance. Uh, gross NPA and net NPA improved uh, sequentially, and of course year on year significantly came in at 1.73 and 0.78. They are very close to being back to pre-COVID levels. Uh, we are very close, uh, uh, and they are very close to where we've been uh, historically for uh, last five, seven years prior to COVID. Um, uh, so came in at 1.17, 0.78. Uh, the uh, 0.16 RBI had changed the NPA classification requirement for uh, for NBFCs. Uh, there was no impact of of the same on the. Um, uh, on gross NPA and NPA for us as a company. Uh, overall, stage two went down actually by 600 crores, as you can see from the numbers. Overall, stage three went down by 1,000 crores. So between stage two and stage three, the numbers went down by uh, 1,600 odd crores. Uh, panel seven, I'm I'm down to the last. Uh, two panels quickly. Uh, portfolio quality, uh, rather than taking you through the nine panels which are appended in uh, in the slides later, I thought I'll cover it in executive summary. Uh, from a management assurance standpoint, uh, seven portfolios are green. Uh, they are uh, 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 two portfolios are uh, yeah, yellow. Uh, actually, AF portfolio has actually moved from red to yellow uh, it used to be 86 percent current business it is it is close to 83 percent current business now um, all goes well and and despite the fact that uh, portfolio has reduced by 4000 or crores in the last two years so it's a it's a declining uh, asset base uh, on which there is improvement um, uh, 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 I have, I have stamped uh, as management insurance the home loans as, as yellow because it came in at 99.1% versus 99.5% that it used to be historically for the last uh, uh, at a pre-COVID level. Uh, otherwise, I could easily argue even home loan is green, uh, so eight out of nine are uh, fundamentally green and AF being yellow. Uh, consolidated uh, post-tax profit grew 85%, as I said, year on year not comparable, but uh, 2125 crores is the highest ever profit that we have, we have generated in any quarter. Um, capital adequacy pretty strong, came in at 27%, tier one itself is at 24.5%. Um, uh, as I said, in Q3, if you look at a long-term guidance metric that we've uh, guided the street on, we've actually met all of them on a, on a, on a quarterly basis. Um, at a, at a, uh, uh, so, if pandemic becomes endemic, and given the state of portfolio that we are in, and with the business transformation going live, uh, I would say I'm quite excited about uh, 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 the next fiscal. Now, BHFL balance sheet, uh, jumping to the subsidiaries, uh, grew 39% to uh, a tad below uh, 50,000 crore at 49,203 crores. Uh, capital adequacy was 19.5%. Um, we would like to run that business at a seven times uh, kind of seven and a half times kind of leverage. Uh, as a result, uh, the B, uh, BFL board today, uh, uh, BHFL delivered a profit of 185 crores, start of 185 crores, a growth of 87 uh, percent. BFL board today, uh, as a result of seven and a half times uh, to eight times kind of leverage uh, thought process that we have, uh, uh, has approved. Uh, investing, infusing two and a half thousand crores of capital in BHFL uh, uh, as a rights issue uh, from BFL. Uh, BFL acquired 65,000 new customers. Um, just to recall, we were acquiring 110 odd thousand customers in BFSL in the previous quarter sequentially. Uh, we decided to focus on activation and quality rather than quantity. And uh, uh, the activation rates now, which used to be 20 to 23 percent in Q3, as a result, are now looking at 43, 44 percent. And that's the direction that we want to take. Uh, we do want to grow BFSL. BFSL given it a part of seven crores. Uh, the BFL board has also approved infusion of 400 crores of equity share capital uh, as a rights issue in BFSL as well today. 
so overall we have committed 2900 crores of capital uh, in today's board meeting uh, into both the subsidiaries um, uh, as a company uh, that's really on uh, on the financials. As I said, overall good quarter uh, for the company. Uh, that's probably being polite, uh, but we're quite happy with the progress company has made in coming out of wave two. Uh, what I do want to spend the next 10 minutes on is uh, update on business transformation. Uh, I have four or five slides that I'll quickly cover. Uh, two of them are busy. I don't intend to cover them, but uh, I'll just take you through very quickly on them. Uh, just before that, uh, uh, Various conversations, uh, various people have various views on what we're creating, and so on and so forth. I thought I just uh, simplify and clarify our stance on what what we are doing this business transformation for. Uh, as a company, we have very clear view that we are a uh, we are a consumer financial services business, uh, diversified consumer financial services business. That's what we are. We believe that the purpose of any business transformation is a means to an end. Uh, it should, to the core business, result in stronger growth momentum, or superior customer experience, or better cross sell or should lower risk or, and improve operating efficiency. That's really the overall objective of any business transformation should be, and we are pursuing this whole agenda of business transformation singularly with our objective. I thought I'd just clarify my uh, stand very clearly as management uh, to make that point. Uh, all business transformation, uh, it's also clear, I'm sure you know, we're all learned people, uh, we've become learned over the last 18 months, uh, we're very clear, it takes time, uh, team and technology. Uh, we, are, we are increasingly super clear about that it needs all these three. Uh, it's been 15 months, we started to provide quarterly update to the street, uh, and uh, uh, since we started the phase one of business transformation, and I thought it would be an appropriate moment for me to share an update as to what's gone live and what's going to go live in, in phase two. Uh, due to wave two, uh, it got delayed by, by three months. It should have logically gone live in October. It went live in uh, December. Uh, phase one has now gone live uh, with a staggered release methodology. Uh, phase one had three sprints. Sprint one is now live for 100% of the customers. Uh, sprint two uh, and three together are live for now 10% of the customers. Uh, it will go live for 100% of the customers between 24th and 26th. And, uh, between 24th, 26th, and 30th of the month, and we will sunset over a period of 15 days from there. The uh, 15, 30 days, depending on how many customers move, uh, the older um, uh, app infrastructure. Uh, but uh, Kurush is looking at me. Uh, the point that he's making is we'll have to go by if customer does not want to upgrade. Uh, as a customer, we may not uh, want to push a force upgrade. So uh, that's a point well taken, Purush, without you stating it. Uh, uh, so, but that would be our intention because uh, we do believe new infrastructure brings significantly uh, larger infrastructure uh, and a much better customer experience for customers. Next two slides, I'll demystify the entire new digital platform. Uh, and the two slides from there on, I'll cover what we'll do in phase two. I think that's the purpose of, uh, uh, of this conversation. Move. Uh, I'm not going to go through this panel. There are two panels on on what I would call uh, uh, 15 components. The way you should read it uh, is that on panel number, in this panel, the verticals read them as, the first column reads them as components uh, at, a, at, a, at a design level, and the rest of them you read as features. Uh, overall, uh, the new digital platform has 15 components. Just go to the next slide. Uh, and has... Uh, uh, 55 odd components, uh, features, sorry. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, which is mentioned on this panel below. Uh, overall, 15 components and 55 features. Uh, let's just go back for a moment. Um, for that's, this is really all any of you as customer or if you came in as a prospect would experience. Uh, you would experience uh, the entire you, entire payment stack that you see on top. You would experience 27,000 retailers through the no-cost EMI marketplace, which attracted 45 million visits in 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 Q3 alone. Uh, so it's already a 250 million uh, run rate um, asset. Uh, the insurance marketplace, which has gone live, uh, uh, has nine insurance companies and uh, 800 odd products. Investment marketplace, uh, the entire mutual fund infrastructure uh, through BSC Star sitting there. Health RX, which is for a customer, uh, our proprietary health infrastructure and the FSL app. Uh, 
uh, these are proprietary uh, uh, app ecosystems. You would see lead journeys as, as what we call three in one financial services. You would experience earn and burn, earn for payment transactions, burn on, uh, convert to cash, bill payment, and voucher. You would, uh, if you press a button and said, uh, call me back in any of the places, you would get a call anywhere between 5 and 15 minutes, uh, depending on uh, which of the 3,400 cities you are, uh, you press a button from. Uh, the productivity apps that are not visible to the customer, but that's really what integrates the integrated voice and marketing cloud infrastructure. You would see all these services, including calculators and profile updates and so on and so forth. You would see 31 app in apps across travel, entertainment, food, utility, shopping at this point in time. Move. Uh, you would experience uh, uh, the feature con featured search and content search um, uh, as a customer, uh, uh, which we think is a hero frame uh, because it's right on the home page. Uh, you would be able to do, uh, you would be able to see, uh, as I said, NPS, uh, social share, wish list, and so on and so forth. Personalization, nudges, notification. Uh, Data you will not see as a customer, but we would take consent from you. Uh, depending on based on consent, uh, it runs business rule engines. Uh, this platform has, uh, is integrated with 400 plus digital APIs to make things happen. Uh, 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 the next two are not really relevant for you, but without a very scalable uh, core platform, it won't work. Uh, so the, I, I mentioned in the past, quarters, uh, three, four quarters ago, that fundamentally restacking the core uh, took the most amount of time, uh, other than uh, focusing on a, a good UI UX. Uh, restacking the core is an important dimension to being able to deliver at scale uh, what we intend to deliver. Uh, also meant investing in core infrastructure, uh, like high availability infrastructure and uh, much, much more deeper investment in disaster recovery, etc. What we've also done is what I've put is because this is a functional construct is uh, 600 all lateral and fresh uh, hires we've got added uh, to be able to deliver this over the last 15 odd months. This is really what you will see, as I said, between 24th and 26th of January, as we send, as we as Google allows us to transition 100% of the customers, and as we see see stabilization of the platform. Uh, that's really all of you, either as prospect or new customer experience. Move. Uh, what we are focused on uh, is uh, is what I would call phase one. It was focused on creating a strong, stable, and a scalable foundation for us to build uh, the overall business transformation for the next few years. What phase two will fundamentally do is to focus on from existing customers to go to new Bajaj customer journeys, would introduce a lot of new features and features and functionalities, would augment current feature set and nuance journeys for our existing customers, uh, taking them closer and closer to DRI. You know, at the end of the day, that's really what uh, uh, we'll transition from processes to journeys is really where we are, uh, uh, we are reorganizing uh, our thought process and company over the last 15, 18 months. And uh, it's a journey and we'll continue to stay there going after journeys. What that would do, move, is what you see as the yellows is really what will come in over a period of eight to nine months. Uh, on this panel, I'm not going to spend time. On this panel, yellow, move. And the next panel, yellows. These are, these are, these are the new stacks and the features and uh, components are not going to change, uh, but uh, uh, the uh, features are going to change. So we'll transition from 15, 15 stacks and uh, 55 odd features, 52 odd features, to 15 stacks and 72 odd features and components. Uh, the only difference versus what we did phase one and phase two is move. Is that uh, consumers will not have to wait for uh, eight months to experience the yellows that I talked to you about? Uh, because as I said, we are focused on building uh, a stable and scalable infrastructure. As that gets delivered, uh, every three months we'll we'll release prints. Actually, we'll release two two months, but since we just started uh, work on uh, on phase two, uh, this time around we will do it in three months. Uh, so uh, uh, this will get delivered over four sprints uh, between July and uh, 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 between July and uh, Nev October, November uh, is really how we are looking at uh, uh, this frame to be. Uh, during this period, as I said, purpose of business transformation this is a longer term frame. We continue to remain committed to deliver uh, our long term guidance matrix as a company. Uh, 
this is being created with a five to seven year view let me simplify the conversation uh, this will help the company uh, not on quarterly outcomes this will help the company get closer and closer to customer uh, as i said deliver the uh, objective of business transformation which is to either reduce cost improve velocity improve growth momentum uh, reduce risk and improve customer experience uh, so that's really uh, move uh, uh and it's not new as you will see some of the expression here uh, as i said in the agm that our agenda is omnipresent so physically we continue to mobilize that we are in 3400 cities digital platform uh, phase one has gone live uh, 16 and a half million customers currently sit on the old platform 6 million now sit on the new new platform uh, half a million new customers we acquired through uh, uh, emi card in in the fourth quarter third quarter alone uh uh they are not just new customers uh, of the 1.3 million sif they gave 240000 loans uh, so we have a 30% uh, conversion rate which is a great uh, number i would say in terms of activation i already talked about 45 million emi store visits so as phase 1 goes live these panels will get filled more and more uh is really how uh, uh it already has 28000 skus and 24000 merchants um Uh, the point of sale transformation uh, uh, which allows good customers to uh, to apply for a pl right at the point of sale we have 600 crores of personal loans in q3 alone and 91 and a half thousand credit card payments we have 5 million just at add below 5 million wallet now a million wall- wallet we added 2.6 million wallets in in q3 alone uh, the p2m infrastructure which you saw as yellow in phase 2 uh, will go live in february you, uh, we are not waiting to for that to happen in phase 2 and we are uh, we we are waiting for regulatory approvals to move ahead further on gpo un uh, uh, the team onboarding uh, as i showed we already hired for the payments business uh, 120 people uh, which will go to 400 people by june so that's really the quarter gone by that's really the business transformation update and uh, um, we are acted as management to um, to chew gum while walking uh that's that's the quarter happy to take questions thank you very much we will now begin the question and answer session anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on their touchstone telephone if you wish to remove yourself from the question queue you may press star and 2 participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question Ladies and gentlemen we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles reminder to the participants anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 ladies and gentlemen in order to ensure that the management is able to address questions from all participants in the conference please limit your questions to two per participant should you have a follow up question we would request you to rejoin the question queue the first question is from the line of kunal shah from icici securities please go ahead yeah congratulations uh, rajiv and the entire team so firstly uh, with respect to this uh, entire app uh, just uh, want to assess the uh, adoption uh, so uh, how should we actually gauge the adoption maybe there are some metrics which you have highlighted in terms of people who were there on the consumer app and how many how been uh, they have been onboarded on to the new app so maybe 16.5 and 6 Now, uh, so in that, in terms of uh, uh, maybe when you were making the remark, you said that many of them would not to uh, would not like to migrate, and there will be no force upon them. So, if you can highlight out of the total customer base, what is the final endeavor which we are looking at, and by what time we would be seeing it, and as and when the new features get introduced, how do we convey it to the customers okay that this is getting launched this is what has happened because i think insurance and something was not available it is coming through now whatever comes on from 24 to 26 how do we keep on intimating to the customers and improve the adoption out there so two things uh, uh, kunal from a uh, uh, let so there are two three large engines uh, that will drive adoption uh, you walk into the point of sale uh, uh, your agreement is now on it i mean as on from 1st to february uh, so any new customer or existing customer comes on board uh, uh, he see he has to go and do otp and do an agreement there in the app 
I mean, our entire ARU infrastructure is now driving the tax. Because at the end of the day, if I am uh, trying to do a, um, a, 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 a activation and response units with which which sends uh, which do uh, largest amount of communication with prospects and with existing customers, uh, all of it is driving it towards uh, the new uh, digital platform. So uh, adoption will be reasonably rapid. We are. Uh, we are we are very calm and all channels in the company will go towards it so that's first part of the conversation because all journeys will get weaved in then whether it's a personal loan or it's a point of sale uh, the mobile receipt uh, uh, if you if you if you are a defaulting customer you want to see the receipt you will instantly see it there so uh, wherever you will touch the uh, wherever you will touch us as a customer uh, uh, the connect will be through the app as you move uh, all services, uh, service touch points will be through the app. So service, collection, sales, all through the app. Uh, you know, uh, 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 so that's one part of the conversation. Second part is, as phase two goes live, um, uh, we think uh, we, we are already beginning to track internal, a set of internal matrix. We'll start to publish them for either, let's say, fourth quarter next year onwards. Uh, uh, we are already tracking a set of uh, what we would call uh, 21 metrics that determine a uh, uh, effective app ecosystem. Uh, so uh, just as it gets matured, we'll start to share that as well. So we are a transparent company, uh, but it must be reach a particular maturity uh, uh, before we feel comfortable starting to share. So wait for three more quarters. Okay, sure. And overall, maybe in terms of the transitioning, so if I'm an existing customer, but there are no repeat transactions which are happening, but maybe through, say, collections or some other servicing, which whichever is happening, any which way, I'll keep on migrating to the uh, new app and at least we'll uh, connect with it. But it's an important conversation, Gunal, and, uh, you know, if you go to the functional uh, architecture that we've actually published, uh, number one, number two, uh, the conversation that we did with the uh, with the community on uh, taking on payments as a large frame, the first step that you will see, we are very clear that the engagement would happen through that. That's why you see on top, just if you go there, on top you see UPI, BPI, uh, uh, EMI card, BBPS. Uh, BBPS is now already clocking 250 or 1,000 transactions in a month. Uh, 400,000 transactions, Purush uh, is correcting me, uh, uh, in a month. So we will start to see, uh, and we're we just getting our feet wet. Let me just make that point uh, very clear. Uh, we've been focused on, as I said, building a strong, stable, and scalable foundation. Uh, and uh, we have a large franchise, uh, accelerating it, and we have a large profit pool. Accelerating it is not going to take too much effort. Thank you. Mr. Shah, may we request that you return to the question queue for follow-up questions. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Abhishek Murarka from HSBC. Please go ahead. Hi, good evening, everyone. Uh, first of all, many congratulations for the quarter. Um, so two questions. The first is, uh, uh, you know, uh, on, on OPEX. Uh, so have you got a budget? for you know what you will be offering as cashbacks or incentives on the app and uh, uh, are you also seeing you know you're hiring about you've hired about 600 people you will be hiring another 800 as per your uh, um, presentation so are you seeing a lot of wage inflation there and overall how should we think about opex in terms of cost to income given these two things in the background so that's one uh, i'll come back to the second question will will uh, we'll guide uh, in case there is change. We do believe, as I said, we'll continue to chew gum while walking. Uh, we remain committed to deliver uh, 33 or percent uh, kind of uh, OPEX to name uh, ratios that we were at pre-COVID level. Over time, Abhishek, as uh, velocity grows, uh, as you become more efficient, as, as other associates, uh, you know, the number will go down. Uh, uh, or could go down. I won't say will go down, could go down. Mm -hmm. But uh, the 33% number or 32, 33, 34, um, I, I, I'm not fixated on uh, on the number. I'm fixating on the trend line that uh, we will continue, we remain committed to delivering profitability while investing uh, in our future. 
Great. So basically, what you're saying is, despite all these efforts of investing in you know people and also uh, through the app on cashback and all that, it's not going to skew uh, uh, the cost income ratio from that level, 33 to 34, 35, whatever it is, low low 30s. No. Yes. Oh, perfect. And the the other uh, the other question I had is uh, basically on the provision guidance. Now we've gone up to forty eight to fifty billion, and you said you you know you're trying to be conservative. But on the other side, you know you've also said that the impact of wave three is not really as much as wave one, wave two. So why have we really increased this uh, guidance? Uh, as I said, uh, we remain in a uh, uncertain zone. Uh, we don't want credit costs drag p and l drag the overall momentum let me simplify the conversation um, mm -hmm. you know we 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 like to run a fully costed p and l as a company and that's really what we've done for the last 14 15 years uh, um, and we want to remain conservative uh, as i said this is management overlay if it doesn't occur uh, which is for the first 17 days is looking like uh, and by June we don't have a fourth wave uh, this is available uh, to be uh, to be rolled back because uh, let me in fact further complicate the conversation the gross NPA net NPA is back to pre-covid levels um, the stage two stage three assets adjusted for balance sheet are back to pre-covid levels so uh, we are very comfortable on all these four metrics but the uncertainty um, uh, uh, is what is causing us as management uh, to take a conservative view. That's all. Thank you, Mr. Murarakam. May we request that you return to the question queue for follow up questions. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Shubranshu Mishra from Systematics. Please go ahead. Hi, Rajiv. Congratulations on the set of numbers. Uh, so, uh, two questions. First is oh, uh, uh, slightly complicated. We can define what is the age in uh, average age income settle score of the new to Bajaj uh, customer. How many of them are 700 plus? Uh, the second is if you can also list out the concentration uh, of the distribution reach on slide 47. We've given out the consumer durable uh, digital product store, lifestyle uh, retail stores. What are the top thousand or top five hundred stores in each category uh, catered to it, uh, either in terms of volumes or uh, value uh, to the AUM? And uh, last question is quantitative. When do we plan to become a bank or apply to become a bank? Um, uh, so uh, first is a PG. Uh, fundamentally, look uh, at a design level. Uh, 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 we focus on who we want to do business with uh, in the EMI card space. Uh, so we we target essentially uh, those prospects that we uh, intend to onboard as a customer. So that's level one point that I must make. Uh, level two, um, as a result, uh, uh, they have to be uh, 700 plus or 7, 720 plus, uh, or they can be zero minus one. So that uh, uh, we are clear about it. Uh, normally, we see from a trend line standpoint, as I said, we acquire 492,000 customers in, in Q3. That means 160 odd thousand customers in EMI card platform uh, every month. 80, 85 percent of the customers are 720 plus uh, uh, from a bureau standpoint, and between 12 and 15 percent could be zero minus one. But even though zero minus one are ones that we want to target. Uh, uh, so uh, that's point number two. Uh, TG remains uh, between uh, 32 to 45. That, that's really the TG uh, that comes through the board because the moment you want 85% of them to be bureau tested, uh, naturally, in general, uh, uh, you're going to find uh, that TG. And we find that that TG, above the 30 TG, uh, is... Uh, is, is, is about building a long-term uh, business. Uh, that's third question. Uh, fourth, uh, sorry. Uh, contribution by top thousand. So to contribution by top uh, top twenty percent of the top uh, top twenty dealers would have twenty percent market share. You know that's not changed. Uh, it's also not changed uh, because we've kept going deep. So uh, uh, if you say, if you take a top 20 city view, that number would be very different. 
but the moment you take a 3,423 cities view, uh, uh, the number has been at 20% now for uh, for a long, long time. Of course, the top 20 also kept going down. The top 20, some of them have got down to 1,500 kind of city. That's also uh, not 1,500. They have 2,000 stores, so uh, could be down to uh, so uh, uh, number would be 20%. It's reasonably uh, uh, reasonably. Uh, distributed uh, both geographically and uh, uh, from a concentration of uh, uh, retailer contributions. Um, bank, uh, uh, no, there's no plan. We'll definitely update before <laughs> we decide. Uh, I think uh, at this point in time, there's no such plan, uh, and that's up for. Um, uh, RBI came out with uh, uh, their, their guidelines. It's up for the shareholders to decide, and we as management will follow what shareholders decide. Sure. So, thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Prakar Agarwal from Edelweiss. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir. Uh, just three sets of questions. First, in terms of uh, home loans, so you highlighted that is yellow. What are the exact pressure points that you're seeing to highlight that segment, particularly as a yellow? Uh, second, uh, when you talk about in have we lost you, Prakash? Prakash. 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 Yeah, Prakash. Sorry. Yeah, so uh, I was talking more from a home loan perspective. Uh, what makes you classify that as yellow, uh, which is first. Uh, second, yeah. Yeah. second, in terms of customer recognition, so you saw, said that from a normalized level, we probably may go to 8 to 10 million over a period of time. What exactly is the architect uh, with that, that gives you uh, increased levels in terms of uh, higher customer recognition rate? And uh, uh, lastly, in terms of when you make a point that competitive intensity in few of these operating segments has uh, risen, where exactly have you seen this? Uh, uh, which players have exactly seen this reason? And do you see that profitability in few of these segments also getting curtailed because of higher competition? Because bounce rate is what you said that has stagnated in January or probably is, is probably similar in December. So do you see pressure points in profitability in few of the segments wherein that, that is seeing higher competition? Uh, so look, it's, it's it's visible all over. You're able to get an auto loan at seven and a half percent. You're able to get uh, home loan at six point six percent. GSEC is at six point ten. Yeah, GSEC is at six point six. Home loan is at six point six. <laughs> so uh, uh, that's competitive intensity for uh, uh, for you. Uh, personal loans uh, are going at ten and a half, eleven percent for best customers. Um, to my mind, personally, uh, uh, does not adjust for uh, uh, um, for the pricing does not adjust for risk. Uh, to my mind, I mean now, and I could be wrong. Uh, and uh, we are clear that there are based on our PPM frames, uh, uh, there is a red line uh, to where you can go on product pro from a, a pricing standpoint. So that's really the, the second response to the second point. It's it's all around us. Uh, try and apply for a personal loan. You can get it at 11%. Uh, salary personal loan. Professional doctors are getting money at 11%. So um, uh, uh, it's not risk adjusted in my in my mind. Uh, home loan. If you see, I've, I've put up the panel. Panel 58. Uh, logically, should be 99.25 kind of number. Uh, in, in my assessment, and uh, that's why yellow. It's not a red in any given manner. It's just, uh, as you see the number to be here, um, uh, to my mind, it should be a uh, 99.25 uh, kind of number. Um, as it gets there, we'll stamp it as, um, uh, as, as green. It uh, does not reflect uh, a deteriorating um, uh, credit situation given the nature of the uh, business, but that's the management assurances. Assessment. Uh, were these the two questions, Prakar? So, uh, just just last one was was on customer acquisition that you said that eight to ten million is, is what we're targeting. So, what is the underlying architect where which you see that uh, over a period of time you will be able to ramp uh, that customer acquisition on a normalized level of six to eight million? Mm -hmm. uh, I think as the digital platform becomes more and more robust, as the journeys become more and more integrated. Um, uh, uh, you will see that happen. Uh, I I would only just add one more dimension since uh, we're pushing this conversation is that this is only an app conversation. Uh, there's eventually even uh, uh, whether you came on 
app or in web the experience should be same if uh, it should be same not even similar uh, so um, as both the platforms uh, um, um, uh, are created are are, are optimized uh, deliver identical journeys uh, i am uh, uh, quite excited and do believe that the momentum will be strong uh, that that's what gives me uh, uh, the uh, that's the that's our assessment as management so sure, thanks a lot thank you sir thank you the next question is from the line of kuntal shah from oakland capital please go ahead good evening rajiv and thanks for the uh, explanation and the commentary there on but just one request that uh, this presentation was just released 5 minutes before the call and i think so most of us would not have that's correct gone time to uh -huh. it and yeah. if the presentation were to refer to kubernetes and data lake i can assure you 99% of the people on this call wouldn't even understand it that's okay that's a, i don't have a view on that uh, we are supposed to provide uh, yeah. update kuntal so uh, uh, our our board meeting was finished at 5 it went on a little longer as you can see uh, we just committed uh, large capital uh, it is explanation to the board uh, uh, and to to commit such large amounts of capital to the two subsidiaries um, so thanks, thanks. Uh, just the point uh, you can imagine you can imagine our state Uh, we've been at it since morning, and we just uh, at seven o'clock also answering questions. Maybe call next day will help. Anyway, uh, my two questions are: you mentioned there are going to be almost 600 plus APIs. APIs can enable even third party to offer solutions on your platform, provided you are not willing to or you don't want to. So, are you planning to make it an open kind of a marketplace where they can also mutually benefit from your reach and your customer base, and you could do a revenue share with them? And uh, I saw a marketplace of Bajaj two wheeler. So, it means you have moved beyond Bajaj ecosystem. Is is yes. is the is the uh, we'll be launching uh, two wheeler uh, financing for non captive uh, customers by. Uh, Between first of June or first of July. In fact, we would have launched it if not for the marketplace. Uh, let me make one important point that as we deliver phase two or any new large product, uh, the whole approach to launching products, uh, conceptualization to delivery, uh, we would not do anything that is not available on day zero uh, to customers on the digital platform. Uh, so technically, we could have gone live on first of February with a two-wheeler. Uh, financing business we have held it back for 5 months because we want uh, skus across uh, mechanical and electric uh, to be uh, visible and available to customers to be able to compare and shop um, so that's one part and two as i said uh, on day 0 we would not launch without uh, without um, being on uh, the digital platform uh point uh, your second question from the lord api api is available third party products to be developed on bajaj ecosystem in our programs are uh, mostly apis apis at level 1 over time uh, as we see which piece is generating velocity we will keep integrating tighter you know there is a lot of conversation that goes around uh, saying people are building super app super app super apps are not created they get created because that's what consumer asked in search and then uh, you deep in journey at this one time you see 31 of them they are all apis uh, but they are level 1 apis they will get to level 2 level 3 uh, 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 and so on and so forth wherever we see velocity so 31 is going to 46 or 47 whatever we said 51 50 sorry uh, so the, those are uh, in app programs are built as apis but let me caution built as uh, level 1 apis so they'll get to level 2 level 3 uh, uh answering your uh, second order question uh, no view on on um, on exposing it to other than in app uh, programs our main focus in phase 2 is to make our customers journeys easier and easier and easier because that's really what generates uh, uh Uh, we are a consumer diversified consumer financial services business and that's really what generates the um, uh, the balance sheet and the profitability and our entire focus is on that uh, um, i hope that answers the question 
No, just wanted to know the pros and cons of opening it for third party applications which you are not present on or are not willing to be present on, but uh, customers. Uh, so, there's no never say never, uh, Kuntal, but um, don't have a view at this point in time. I think that, that's the. Uh, uh, so, if we think for travel and for shopping, uh, uh, our customers are, or for things like casual gaming, customers are interested, they're already there. Uh, over time, uh, we, we see on the search menu, uh, customers are looking for. Uh, another category uh, uh, based on data uh, will go out and build partnerships. Uh, over time, we see in the existing in-app programs, uh, clients are doing more activity. Uh, we will integrate tighter. That, that's how uh, uh, that, that's our view. Okay, thanks. I hope uh, Elon Musk or Salman Khan is going to endorse Bajaj coin, which you have laid out. I think so you are going down that path. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Nitin Jain from Fair Connect. Please go ahead. Hello. Yes, yes, Nitin. Yeah, can you? Yeah. Uh, so I just have one quick question. Uh, the the speed at which uh, companies acquiring fixed deposits, uh, like uh, despite offering better rates than you know private banks, that seems to have you know decelerated over the past few quarters. Uh, like from where we were growing, you know, eight to ten percent QoQ, we are down to low single digits. So, yeah. any comment on that? That's all. Thank you. Uh, no, it's a very fair question. Uh, it's a correct question. Um, we've invested in ten, eleven channels over the last four, five years, uh, and we told the team the time has come for you to demonstrate that the distribution heft has as much role to play as pricing. Uh, and that's really what we are testing for the last uh, six, eight months. We do see that, uh, and we just increased pricing. We have internally pegged it as part of our ALCO processes to, to GSEC, uh, that we kept pricing very tight, but the business still generates between 950 to 1,000 crores of retail deposits with average deposit of 3.5 lakhs a month. So uh, uh, we just... Let me use the word. Uh, we're just maturing uh, the the business to uh, to uh, so that's on one part. And the second dimension is that at the end of the day, uh, retail liabilities is a cost center. Uh, there is a cost that we uh, that we decide uh, that that we are willing to spend uh, to uh, to diversify the balance sheet uh, uh, for on the liability side, um, and they have to make ends meet in that. Uh, so these are the only two objectives, uh, which is maturing the maturity of the uh, distribution investments that you made, and uh, two, uh, running it in a disciplined manner within a particular uh, cost base. So uh, just if I can add a follow up, uh, is our uh, is cost of acquisition of uh, deposits, uh, has it gone up recently? Uh, how is it? No, it's not gone up. It's actually gone down. Uh, but that's the pool that is available. Uh, that that uh, so that is referring to the overall cost of fund that it creates for the company. No, no, no I was referring to cost okay. of acquisition. Okay. Uh, the second, the third point that Sandeep is making is a correct point as well. That at the end of the day, uh, there are users of this uh, money uh, who also ask in Alco, uh, what do I do with the money uh, if it comes at this price? So eventually, we have to find a rightful balance once the business reaches a particular point of maturity. So that's really uh, uh, the point that Sandeep made is equally important. Um, uh, between these three, uh, that's how you see, and your observation is correct, uh, uh, slowing down of, of the uh, origination. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. The next question is from the line of Dawalgara from DSP Investment Managers. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, Rajiv. Uh, congrats on uh, good numbers uh, Just and, and the additional disclosure. So I just had a couple of questions. Uh, first was on uh, new loan uh, origination. So uh, you know, the point is, uh, uh, in terms of uh, sales velocity of uh, existing customer base, uh, if you see the current uh, traction, it seems to be similar to second half of last year, but uh, you know, still substantially lower than uh, pre-COVID run rate. Uh, so the question is, is this number uh, less relevant as the ticket size uh, sort of increases uh, uh, or uh, it's important and, uh, uh, you know, that's something that we expect to normalize uh, in FY23. So uh, that's... You mean loan booked? 
the number of loans booked yeah yeah 7.44 it's a correct observation it's a correct point that versus the 6 million the 7.4 looks good but uh, the point that you're making is correct in december 19 quarter we had booked 7.8 million 7.67 7.67 million 7.7 million to be precise during that period if you if you recall uh, post pandemic we came to a conclusion and we disclosed that to the street there are two lines of businesses uh, that uh, uh, that washed away last three years of profitability uh, uh, one was the retail emi spends business uh, uh, and that used to do 200000 accounts a month we capped that at 60000 accounts so from a 600000 accounts uh, we allowed them to do only uh, even in a season festive season quarter like the previous one we kept them at 200000 account 220000 account uh, so that's 400000 plus minus gone away the second was that we used to do these wallet loans to our existing customers of uh, 5 to 10000 rupees for 3 months uh, so called in the new jargon uh, which didn't exist then called bnpl uh, we uh, we used to do 70 odd thousand loans in a month that was 200000 loans in a quarter we walked away from that last uh, now last to last april um, so that's how the 600000 number uh, logically uh, gets reconciled to 7.4 so uh, 7.7 uh, apple to apple is 8 million uh, uh, is how you should read it observation is correct uh, is it important answer is yes in in uh, uh, new loans booked remain an important metric because it demonstrates engagement demonstrates uh, velocity so it remains important and we think as the economy comes back as pandemic becomes endemic uh, uh, given the franchise creation given the deep distribution given the new digital uh, uh, platforms that are getting created um, we will see both happen new customer acquisition and uh, uh, new loans book i'm waiting to see hopefully a uh, normal summer we have not seen a normal summer summer contributes to 40% of the business we have not had a normal summer uh, which is april may june for last two years so i hope that answers the question it just one uh, sort of follow up a small point is uh, you know in this period of uh, december 19 to now i mean we've seen about 33% uh, accretion on uh, cross sell uh, customer base 33% 34% accretion on emi uh, base as well emi card base so uh, adjusted for the engagement ratios uh, pre uh, covid versus where we are, we should be next year uh, broadly should it be similar uh, even adjusting for the remi loss and uh, the uh, wallet loan loss uh, it should be similar yes we will see increase velocity i am now it's a point of view it's i can't say that uh, uh, as we as as i mentioned earlier to the response that as this whole business transformation gets delivered as customers become, we will should see increase velocity and increase engagement and that should lead to uh, um, higher volumes uh, go Uh, and the second question uh, rajiv i had was on the uh, digital uh, e- emi uh, cards uh, so if you look at the uh, base now i mean it's almost like 5% of the uh, emi card base uh, uh, if you look at the engagement metrics here uh, i mean at least optically they look uh, better than the uh, 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 you know the existing emi franchise uh, so just uh, i mean i wanted to understand the uh, economics part of it i mean uh, should this card be uh, uh, you know uh, much better break even compared to uh, you know the normal uh, origination and uh, also they because i, I remember yeah. they are profitable in day one they are profitable on day one understood yeah. understood I, and uh, if there some initial thoughts on the engagement uh, um, uh, out of this 492000 300000 pay uh, a fees and become uh, pay fees instantly uh, and become uh, and get an emi card and 192000 uh, uh, as and when they decide to uh, take the product uh, come and uh, at that point i'll pay so that's how the break up is if you take a further uh, so 492 uh, on aggregate is profitable on day one adjusted for as a, as a pnl Got it. Uh, thanks. I'll come back. Thank you. Thank you.
Ladies and gentlemen, we will take the last question from the line of Aditya from City Group. Please go ahead. Hi, thank you. Um, uh, you uh, if you talk about the uh, two segments, so one you mentioned affordable housing in the last quarter. Um, so what's the profile of that business in terms of target yield, ticket size, and geography? And uh, on IPO financing, which seems to be low, uh, at least on quarter end basis, um, is there a change in view on doing less of that? Um, or could this be just a period and balance sheet phenomena? Um, uh, so affordable housing has just gone live. VHFL has just started to... Uh, and they they feel a team. We are testing it into markets. Uh, we're building that business with a long-term view, um, very clearly. So that's um, very very early days. Uh, um, uh, so uh, I think they're very premature to uh, make any comment on that. Um, it will probably be 18 months before we uh, we start to uh, warm it up. Let me make a point. Uh, so that's one part of the conversation. Uh, two, IPO financing just uh, 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 quarter end, it had no outstanding. So that's one. Two, uh, 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 IPO financing is a phenomena will, as you're all, would be all aware, would, would based on the new guidelines of, of one crore requirement, would probably cease to exist uh, from 31st March on. Uh, so it seems as a market participant at this point in time. Um, so, uh, but we, uh, to retail customers who want it, you would of course offer it. But retail customer uh, was never participating that aggressively. But uh, uh, from a longer term standpoint, I could argue uh, that it's a, it's a step in the right direction uh, to retailize uh, the, um, uh, the market participation. Good. Thank you. And just secondly, uh, is there a, uh, on the LCR norms, uh, what is the expected impact? Um, and uh, I mean, so what, what portion or what amount of liquidity in this quarter do we have, have we kept in in terms to comply with LCR norms? Yeah. Sorry, sir, we are carrying a large amount of liquidity otherwise also. So there is absolutely no impact that uh, the company has uh, from LCR perspective. The only change that was supposed to be done by us is that uh, so far, a large part of the investment was going in mutual fund. Uh, versus mutual fund, now it goes into some of the trade bills and so on and so forth. So that's, a, that's the only change that has taken place. Uh, that also allows us to leverage. So trade bills can be used for uh, raising more debt as well. So that's the thing that has changed. Uh, from an overall guidance perspective, we expect uh, the liquidity buffer for us to go down to 10, 11,000 kind of range as we go along from here. So that's one is here. So even on LCR, ramping up to 100%, there is no material impact? We are more than 100% uh, even now. As the leak says, the mixed change is the, is, uh, serves that. Uh, there is no financial impact other than that. Understood. Thank you. Anuj, shall we call it a day? Ladies and yes, gentlemen, sir. that was the last question for today. I would now like to hand the conference over to Mr. Anuj Singla for closing comments. Uh, thank you, Faisal. Uh, Rajiv, sir, any last comments uh, uh, before we close the call? Uh, so far, so good. Thank you all very much. It's late in the evening. Uh, and uh, stay safe. <laughs> this is the most transmissible <laughs> variant. So uh, please stay safe. And wish us being safe. <laughs> thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Rajiv, sir, and Bajaj Finance for giving us the opportunity to host you. Uh, thanks, everyone, for joining. Uh, this concludes, uh, concludes the call for today. Over to you, uh, Faisal. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Bank of America Securities, that concludes this conference call. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.